Good day everyone. This video present to you the part 2 of uh, chapter 2 IPS and uh, last time we stopped at the criteria 1 of the power cable sizing and we know that in order to obtain the power cable sizing we need to uh, uh, fulfill three criteria uh, which is number one the criteria one is the short circuit current withstand capacity criteria two is the ampacity and the criteria three is the voltage drop so uh, last time we stopped at the next uh, standard cable size that we obtained for the criteria one for the uh, example 2.3 is 240 mm square and now we focus on the criteria two so what is the criteria two so criteria two is for you to obtain the continuous current carrying capacity which in short we call it as an ampacity yeah? ampacity is defined as the current in amperes that a conductor can carry continuously under the conditions of surrounding medium in which the cables are installed so that means it's much depends on the the medium so that means our medium is uh, uh, either the in air or uh, in the ground okay because uh, in our power, power cables normally we install uh, either in air or underground or in ground we call it as a in ground so that's why uh, in all in um, the ampacity is the much depend on the ambient temperature as well as the laying condition of that uh, power cable that means how we install the uh, or, or how we lay the, the power cables and if we follow the uh, IEEE uh, 399 the section 13 so uh, the cable ampacity yeah, you can uh, see here the def definition for the cable ampacity is quite complicated so it will involve basically the temperature of the conductor the TC and then the TA here is the ambient temperature either soil or air okay? so that means if we are uh, installed underground that means it's, it is the soil or right? soil ambient temperature or if we uh, just hang it in air or install in air then uh, the ambient will be the uh, the air okay? and then the del TD the tel T TD is the temperature of the uh, temperature rise of the conductor uh, due to the dielectric heating so uh, dielectric heating means the uh, the insulator uh, the insulator heating and then the del T in I and T is the temperature rise for the conductor uh, due to the uh, due to the interference heating from the adjacent cables so that means uh, let's say uh, just imagine we have uh, four cables eh? R, Y, B and the neutral so uh, how are we going to put the, the cables eh? that means whether it is touching to each other or we have the uh, gap between the, the cables so the adjacent cable means the nearby eh? that means the, <coughs> the nearby cables <coughs> And then the RAC is the electrical AC resistance eh, of the conductor, including the skin effect, the proximity, and the temperature effects. And the R-CA uh, is the effective uh, total thermal resistance. Uh, this is uh, more to the uh, thermal effects, eh, affects the uh, resistance eh, of our uh, cables. Okay, next uh, we will see uh, in a summary, in a summary, in a summary of uh, these uh, IEEE definitions. That means we know that the ampacity is much depends on these uh, following factors. Number one is the ambient temperature, either air or ground. The grouping of all uh, the proximity eh, to other loaded cables, uh, heat uh, sources and the third one is the method of installation how you're going to uh, install it and next is the thermal conductivity of the medium in which the cable is installed and finally the thermal conductivity of the cables uh, constituents so all these uh, five uh, factors uh, we will uh, look at it one by one after this okay and uh, in order to carry out the uh, uh, ampacity uh, criteria two, right? so we need uh, a so-called the duration factors. Right? Duration factors is defined as a k, right? as a k. So k. So what is a k? Then after we obtain this k, then we have to multiply with the uh, the real ampacity of that particular selected uh, power cable. 
So this one uh, we can uh, see it from a, a table eh? or uh, I mean the table from the IET or IEEE. So uh, for the K1, so what is the K1 until K4 here? So the K actually is the K1 uh, products or multiply with K2, multiply with K3 and multiply with K4. So uh, basically K1 and K2 is applicable for all installation including uh, in air or in the ground. Okay. And uh, K3 and K4 is purposely for in ground only. So that means if uh, we laid our cable or we install our cable in air, that means we don't need to go up to K3 and K4. So uh, it is enough to get the K1 and K2 only. Okay. So they mean K3 and K4 will remain one only. Right? So if we install the uh, power cables underground, uh, in ground, so they mean we need to uh, obtain K1, K2, K3 and K4. Okay, let's check uh, what is K1. So K1 is the uh, the ambient temperature. Yeah, the ambient temperature where the cable is laid or installed. Okay, so if in air, that means the air uh, ambient temperature. That means the operating uh, temperature for that particular cable. So K2 is the cable laying arrangement. So how we arrange our uh, cable. So we'll see that uh, next. And K3 is the depth, and I mean how depth is the uh, the cable is buried in the ground, and K4 is the variation of the thermal resistivity of the soil. Right, and now uh, we focus on K1 first. Okay, the K1. K1 is very straightforward, so it is about the ambient temperature. So this one is for the uh, in air installation and uh, the bottom here is the in-ground uh, installation okay so that means if uh, we install our cable in air that means we have to use this one so uh, the air temperature could be varied from 20 degrees celsius up to 55 okay then this is the rating factor that we we need for k1 so, so for example if our ambient temperature for that uh, particular installed cables uh, is 45 degrees Celsius for example so that means we need to use this 0 0.95 as our K1 value okay so if we buried our uh, power cable in ground that means underground okay and then the underground uh, temperature is 40 degrees Celsius that means we that that means we need to use 0 0.91 as our K1 right so that is quite a straightforward from base and what is interesting is uh, uh, that means when we increase the ambient temperature, that means the K1 value will be decreasing. Okay? So what is the meaning of the K1 uh, value decreasing? So once the K1 value is decreasing, that means uh, our power, power cable is derating. Yeah? derating. So if more than uh, 1, it, that means it is okay, no, no problem. So it's, if more than 1, it's okay. But if it, if it is less than one, that means less. That means starting from the forty degrees Celsius here, one, and forty five is zero point nine five, and fifty is zero point eight nine. And now this one is, uh, uh, the cable is experiencing the durations. That means it reduced the, uh, the quality or the performance of the, uh, current carrying capacity. So for example, if a uh, one. The current carrying capacity is uh, 400, for example. So if uh, 0 0.89, that means 0 0.89 multiplied with the 400 ampere. So that means it's less than 400 ampere. So that is the meaning. Okay, next we go to the K2. So K2 is the arrangement. How we arrange the uh, the cables? Huh? Okay, we have uh, two uh, kind of the arrangements. So the arrangement one. So this is our uh, cable the circle one so this is our cable so we have three cables in horizontal right and if you see that uh, each cable is having the air gaps uh, the air or, or the gaps uh, the air gaps uh, a and this is the distance uh, distance between the the cable is a and uh, vertically it has uh, the gaps uh, from the bottoms of the uh, cable to next cable bottoms is uh, 
300 mm, 300 mm. And so in between the, the wall, this is the wall, is 25 mm. So if we arrange our cables this in these arrangements, and then we have to see the, the K2 for arrangement 1. So if we have the uh, cable arrangements for like this one, right? So it is touching to each other. I mean this cable. So we have two, four, five, five cables right? laid horizontally, and uh, each cable is touching to each other, right? So it is cable uh, will be touching to each other. So this is the arrangement two. Even though the vertical is still remain the same, the three hundred mm and. Uh, to the wall also 25 mm but the most important is the cable is touching to each other for arrangement 2 so why if the, uh, the, the the cable is touching to each other that means just imagine the uh, the impact of the proximity effect yeah, the proximity effects especially the uh, 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 capacitance effects yeah, the capacitance effect and uh, this is the value of the uh, K2, eh? that, that means uh, this one is uh, for uh, the cable types is the multi-core cable types and multi-core so it is not a single core but it, this is the multi-core cable laid on open rack in air this one is in air arrangement number one okay arrangement number one so we arrange it like this one so we have the gap between the cables okay and uh, look at these tables so uh, number of cables per rack okay so how many cables we need to put in one rack okay it has one two three six or nine so they mean every three it has one bundle they mean after three no more four okay so after three that means it's another bundle is six and then nine and uh, this is the number of rack that we use one two three or six it seems uh, after one two and three so it don't have four and five because it has another bundles consists of one two three I mean one two three plus one two three is a six okay for example if we have uh, uh, three racks okay, we have three racks and each rack uh, we uh, laid two cables we laid two cable for each rack so I mean uh, what is our value for the K2? So our value for K2 is number of rack is 3 okay, 3 and then we go to uh, 2 uh, cables per rack here so that means our K2 is 0 0.94 right? and uh, if we still uh, with the multi-core cables uh, but this time we arrange it uh, using the arrangement 2 which is uh, touching to each other and this one is still remain 1 to 9 and number of rack is 1 to 6 so for example if we have 6 rack or we have uh, the same 3 racks okay, 3 racks and 2 cable racks 2 cables per racks so 3, 2 so that means we have uh, the K2 value is 0 0.78 as compared to 0 0.94 okay, so this one is much lower as compared to this one because uh, in these situations our cable is touching to each other and then uh, it will increase the resistance eh? it will increase the resistance due to the proximity uh, effect as well as the skin effect so that's why um, the res resistance is higher eh? in this case when our cable is touching to each other and uh, another cable that we can use instead of a uh, multi-core is a single core right? single core uh, but it is in the trefoil circuit eh? in the trefoil circuit that means uh, a trefoil circuit that means uh, we have three single core they mean it tied together tied together like this one we call it as a trefoil circuit yeah? trefoil circuit uh, so the, the the installation is like this one is one bundle two bundle and three bundles like this right and if this is the cable that we use uh, in air so that means uh, when you use the trifold cir circuit we don't need to uh, consider uh, either it's arrangement one or two okay so it's only like this one it's three four yeah. so the number of racks is uh, the number of cables per racks is one or two or three okay and the number of racks is one two three and six 
right so the same things if we have three and then uh, number of cables rack is two that means it's three two that means our k2 is 0 0.94 and if uh, we have the uh, multi-core still with the multi-core cable but this time we are not installed in air but rather we install it underground eh, in ground in ground that means we have to look at uh, uh, the formation that means how we uh, laid the cables so in this case it is uh, laid horizontally eh, that means horizontally so if we laid uh, underground horizontally uh, with the multi-core cable so this is our uh, K2 value that is our K2 value so this time is uh, the spacing so it is uh, more concerned on the spacing so this is still the same number of cable per group but this time is a group eh? it's a group and then uh, this one is a spacing so what is the spacing either it's touching to each other or you have the gaps eh? 15 30 up to 60 cm and for example if we have a uh, multi-core eh, touching to each other and uh, four cables per groups so they mean touching each other four cable per group they mean our k2 is 0 0.62 and still with multi-core cables but this time we uh, still uh, laid in ground but this time we are normal in horizontal but it is tier formation the tier formation is the uh, the vertical eh, the vertical formations so same things it need uh, to know the spacing say, of the cables and the number of cables like this one okay. so of course the number here is four six and eight so it's quite different than uh, this one because this one is arranged in the horizontal formation and this one is is uh, laid in the tier formation or vertical formation okay if the single core still with k2 is it k2 we have a lot of the uh, uh, arrangement eh? arrangements or the condition so this time is a single core cable we laid it in the trefoil eh? the trefoil circuit in ground okay now uh, it is in ground single core trefoil in ground in horizontal formation so since it is a trefoil uh, that means we don't have the the tier formation we only have the horizontal formation because it is only one trefoil circuits right and same thing is need the spacing and the number of circuit in in the in the group that means three four how many three four we have okay. and next uh, we go directly to k3 eh, the k3 so k3 is applicable only for underground cables eh, underground cables so if we laid our cable in air so that means it is not applicable okay so this is only applicable for underground or in ground so in ground we look at this one is the the depth of the laying cable so k3 is concerned on the uh, the depth so how uh, depth is the uh, the cable is buried in the ground okay and it depend much on the cable size so this cable this cable size up to 25 square mm and above 300 square mm okay so this is the depth of laying in the centimeter 75 up to more than 180 centimeter this is very uh, deep inside okay and then you can see the uh, uh, the the k3 value here and uh, finally we have the k4 right? k4 so we have the multi-core cable laid direct in grounds so k4 is about the thermal resistivity of our soil because uh, we know that uh, if we laid our cable underground so that means we have to consider the um, they mean the medium of our uh, underground condition which is the soil so sometimes uh, if the uh, resistance is too uh, the thermal resistivity is too high so they mean we need to put some uh, a sand uh, some sand or some rock inside the uh, the ground uh, in, in the ground so that's why in order to to in, uh, to reduce the uh, the thermal resistivity okay so the thermal resistivity is, uh, is is to read off the the heat eh, from our cables because we know that uh, once uh, our cable is carrying the current so it will heat up eh, it will heat up and uh, how the heat is eliminated so the only chances is through the, the soil eh, because it is buried in the 
in the in the ground so it, the chances is only through the the soil so that means the thermal resistivity of the soil is very important in this case and uh, so this is the value of the thermal resistivity in uh, a degree centimeter per watt okay. 100 up to 300 and uh, this is the the size of the cables 25 up to 70 in this case only okay so if uh, uh, previously we have multi core cables so if we have three single core cables okay so this one you have to uh, careful eh? so it depend on the, the question so if the question is given you three single core they mean you have to use these tables okay? so if the, the question uh, give you in the multi core cables they mean you have to use these tables to find the k4 value so this is the uh, the k4 value for three single core cables so uh, they mean the the criteria is more or less the same right but this one is just up to 50 only and the cable the cable size and here is 70 eh, for the multi-core and the three single core is up to 50 uh, square m only okay we continue with the uh, the previous examples so example 2.3 so from example 2.3 we uh, the last uh, cable size that we obtained is 240 mm square okay 240 mm square but now we continue and yeah, we continue so we know that uh, our cable is uh, is serving a load eh, a load a motor a motor loads uh, which is 160 kilowatt motor yeah, 160 watt motor and uh, in this data you can obtain from this source eh, for example uh, the motor uh, data you can obtain from the mechanical eh, mechanical engineer or the process load list and um, go further for the motor data we have the uh, power factor is 0 0.85 and the efficiency is 95 uh, percent okay so the type of the cable that we use is like in example 2.3 it is uh, aluminium of the conductor and the insulator is uh, xlpe yeah? the cross link uh, polyethylene so three core cables so it's a multi-core cables and electrical design ambient temperature so our ambient temperature is 50 degree at yeah, 50 degree and uh, what is the laying conditions yeah, the laying condition of this cable is uh, assume laid in open rack in air okay that mean we install only in air and i mean we just need to uh, to to obtain the k1 and k2 only right because it is in air and assume it is three nodes of cable rack that I mean we have three cable cable rack uh, with a number of cable per racks is six a number of cable uh, is six okay and then uh, the cable that we use is the multi-core okay? multi-core cables and the cable is laid touching to each other yeah? touching each other so the cable ambacity uh, from uh, example 2.3 yeah? example 2.3 is uh, 240 mm uh, square so sorry so it's uh, 200 mm square and and this is uh, the ampacity is 418 ampere okay? and uh, the duration factors so we need to consider the duration factor for this okay so uh, bear in mind we have uh, multi-core multi-core and then the ambient temperature is 50 so we have three cable racks and six cables per rack and it is touching to each other okay so that's why uh, this is the uh, so-called the the steps yes? the steps to be followed number one we need to obtain the the motor currents yeah? the motor current so what is the motor current with power factor and the efficiency so that means we need to uh, calculate what is the input current for this motor okay so this motor is 160 kilowatt so that means uh, the i is equal to 160 kilowatt divided by 33 times 415 volts times 0 0.85 the power vector and lastly times the efficiency 0 0.95 okay then you will get the the value Okay, once we obtain the uh, the motor currents, okay, or we call it as a rated load currents, and now we shift to ampacity duration factor. 
So uh, since our uh, cable is laid in air, so that means what we need to consider is only K1 and K2. Okay, K1. So uh, here I have root down uh, uh, the K1 value 0 0.89 and K2 is 0 0.7. Okay, let's check for K1 for example. Okay, the K1. So K1, we go further here. K1, eh, ambient temperature is 50, so it is 0 0.89. Okay, correct. And K2, eh, K2, it is uh, touching to each other. I mean, we are using the arrangements 2. Eh, arrangements 2. And then uh, this is not our concern because this is arrangement 1. So what we need is in air, multi-core, and arrangements 2. Eh, arrangements 2 is this one, eh, arrangement 2. And we have uh, how many number of racks? So we have three racks. Okay, we have three racks, and the number of cable per rack is six. Okay, three, three here, and then we go to six. Okay, which is zero point seven is our K two. Okay, uh, K three and K four we don't need to have it because it is in air. Okay, now that's why we have uh, a K value is zero point eight nine multiplied with zero point seven. Okay. And uh, next is uh, we need to understand the cable, the cable ampacity, and yeah, the cable ampacity is the K multiplied with the cable ampacity itself. Okay, so uh, uh, sorry again, this one is uh, four one eight. Okay, this is four one eight. Sorry, this is four one eight. Four one eight value. Okay, and this one is uh, in mm square. Right. So now we have uh, four one eight ampacity multiplied with the k. So k is zero point eight nine times zero point seven, and uh, lastly we need to analyze is the value of current in 3 in 3 is larger than i1 the current in 1 so that means the current of the ampacity must be larger than the the rated load current here okay. then we only say that the cable is the cable size here is 418 which is referring to 240 mm square is uh, sufficient eh, to serve this uh, motor loop right so if it is in reverse that means this i1 is more than i3 that means this cable size should be upsizing eh, to be should be upsizing okay let's check the i1 i1 is 275.66 ampere eh, 275.66 ampere is obtained from here like just now eh, 160 uh, kilowatt divided by so 3 times 415 volts times uh, 0 0.85 times 0 0.95 then you obtain the, the value of 275.66 here uh, but the I3 I3 is uh, the ampacity 418 multiplied with this K value I mean we only obtain 260.41 ampere which is I3 is less than I3 is less than I1 okay? I3 now is less than I1. This is not like this one. So if uh, I3 is more than I1, that means the cable size of 240 here is okay. Yeah, it's okay. But this time is it is in reverse. Eh? It is in reverse. That means uh, we need to upsize our cables further. Eh? So we need to upsize our uh, cables to the next uh, size is 300 mm. So how to obtain this one? So we have to refer to the 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 cable the tables here okay, the table so this is the table is from the uh, IET wiring standard okay, IET wiring standard so uh, what we can see is uh, previously we have two hundred forty yeah, so this is the uh, the cross sectional area or the size two hundred forty so the next size is three hundred so that's why we need to upsize our cables from two hundred forty to three hundred so two hundred forty so it is uh, in air yeah, in air and then uh, it is uh, perforated in the cable tray. In the cable tray, that means it is a multi core. This one is the single core, and the two core cables. One, two core cables. So we are using this one. Eh? It's a multi core. 
uh, either it's a three or four core cables so that's why this is the ampacity and yeah, the current carrying capacity or m in amperes or we call it as ampacity so this is the uh, ampacity for 240 and this is ampacity for uh, 300 yeah, it is 488 so that's why uh, I wrote here is 488 ampere okay, for the ampere that for the new size of the uh, cables. Right, so now uh, we continue it. Uh, we continue uh, to see the summary. So the summary. So previously when we go to the criteria number one, which is the short circuit rating. So what we obtain is uh, the size of the cable is three core, right? three core times two hundred forty square mm, right? two hundred forty square mm. But uh, when we proceed to uh, criteria two, which is continuous current requirement, and then uh, we have upsized our cable to uh, three hundred mm square. And then next, for the criteria three, right? the next consideration will be the voltage drop criteria. So uh, voltage drops. Uh, is very easy the voltage drop is much depends on the current and uh, the current either it is a starting current or operating current and uh, the starting current or the running or we call it as an operating current or running currents so uh, besides the currents so the voltage drop is also much depends on the impedance and uh, I mean the cables impedance so how much is the R per kilometer and how much is the ack per kilometer for these cables and then uh, we try to look at the uh, the common standard eh, for the voltage drop so for example if we have 11 kV coming in eh, and then uh, this is the uh, the source eh, from uh, from the uh, uh, switch gear eh, we have the switch gear to step down the uh, the voltage further eh, because inside the switch gear we have the step down transformer which is step down from 11 to 415 volts okay and then we laid the cables here we laid the cable to our PCC point of uh, common coupling a eh, point of common coupling and eh, the PCC uh, this is seems like uh, our uh, a switch port for example the switch port after the, the, the switch gear here we have the switch port and then from this uh, switch port or the MCC we just directly laid the cable to the the load here okay. so we have two alternative right? two alternative one is uh, we have the uh, the existing cable like this one and it led to the PCC and then from the PCC we only laid our cable to the load so in that case uh, so this is uh, uh, we need to follow the the first criteria so this is the first criteria this is the second criteria Okay, the first criteria is uh, we have uh, uh, two installations of the cable so one is from the uh, switch gear or the source until the PCC and then from the PC to the loads so that's why we have two uh, different uh, voltage drop here okay? so from the source to the PCC so the maximum allowable is only drop 3% and okay? that means the voltage uh, drop for this section is only 3% and well uh, from the PCC to loads the secondary feeder uh, the allowable is also 3% so that means in total we have 6% so this percentage is uh, is uh, is referring to the running voltage drop right? it is not for the starting voltage drop and so uh, we are more concerned on the running voltage drop because this is the operating voltage drop that means it is uh, permanently happens yeah, but the starting is just a momentary so it just happened during the starting of that particular motor so this is not that uh, uh, crucial as compared to the running okay if you lead the cables directly from the source to uh, the load of the they mean the motor loads so they mean the allowables uh, voltage drop is only five percent as compared to here is six percent because it has been divided into two the primary feeder and the secondary feeder here so if if you lead directly from the source is five percent only and uh, from the uh, utilization of uh, electrical energy i think you have uh, explored this one the how to calculate the voltage drop so we have basically uh, two uh, two uh, 
uh, method one is a very approximated uh, method voltage drop is i i is the current and the design current times these uh, the uh, the, re the resistance and the reactant and this is uh, the power factor angle and the power factor angle and uh, it has been modified for uh, three phase applications like this one the percentage of the voltage drop now this is for a uh, three phase application eh? so we have the uh, r also we have r and x eh? as well as the the data for the power factor uh, angle and then what is the i here is the uh, the design current eh? or the operating current and the l is the length of the uh, the cable and eh? the length of the cable in meter okay let's say we have 150 meter so that means we just type in 150 for L okay. so why it's divided into 1000 because uh, the R and X normally is defined in ohms per kilometer so that's why we need to uh, to have the uh, ohms per meter and okay. then after that we only can multiply with the length okay. so that's why in order to uh, to read off the kilometer they mean we divide by 1 thousand eh? we just remove the kilometer and the vs is the uh, the line to line voltage and eh? the line to line voltage for the supply let's say for our supply uh, uh, from the previous year is a uh, 415 eh? 415 because we did the cable from 415 okay? and uh, further if we need to uh, have a more accurate equations eh? more accurate because uh, for this equation so even though we have modified for three phase application but it's still only considered for the horizontal eh, horizontal voltage drop eh, as like this one okay so we have uh, uh, the vessel diagram here so this is the receiving r v rack eh, receiving v receiving and this one is the v sending eh, the sending n so this is the receiving n so this is our uh, current eh, this is our current with uh, the lagging power factor here so we have the uh, voltage drop horizontal voltage drop here right? normally what we consider is only a and b that mean the voltage drop at r and x x and x so this is what uh, we did for this one r and x right? but if we need to have more uh, precise work and we need to uh, adjust it eh? we need to adjust it we need to include the vertical uh, domain eh? vertical domains is like this one right okay so this is c vertical domain for the r so this is contribution of the r uh, due to the vertical domains okay? and what about the d d is for the uh, x eh? that mean contribution from the x for the vertical domain of the voltage drop uh, this is more precise and in this case it has been uh, put in the the number of parallel run cable that mean how many uh, parallel run cable we have at one time so this put in n so let's say we have uh, uh, six cables so that means it's six cables here okay and the rest is almost the same definition as the the previous one okay for example in example uh, now we go to example 2.5 okay so from the criteria two in the previous ampacity, so we stop at uh, the conductor size of three hundred mm square, eh, three hundred mm square, aluminium excess PE, and uh, we know that the cable having uh, this is the R, eh, this is the R, and this is the X for the cable eh, from the manufacturer's catalog. So this is the R. Uh, 0 0.128 ohms per kilometer and the x is 0 0.071 ohms per kilometer okay the length of the cable is 150 meter okay and the running power factor the running power factor is 0 0.85 that means the theta is 31.79 so you can calculate for the theta because the theta is the up cost eh, for 0 0.85 so this is the starting power factor uh, starting eh? during the starting the power factor is lower 0 0.3 so the theta is 72 here and uh, during the starting also the current is six times of the rated current okay? uh, then assume a voltage drop of 1.5 in the cable of incoming feeder uh, that means it is assumed from source to the PCC like just now okay? from source to the PCC that means this one okay? 
so this one the primary feeder so it has been defined as 1.5 percent of the voltage drops here okay 1.5 okay now uh, we need to calculate uh, the running and the running voltage drop this is more uh, to our consideration and eh? more to our consideration rather than the the starting here okay? and uh, we, we look at this one first the running voltage drop and the running for voltage drop from the PCC to loads okay what I obtain is uh, here is 10.47 volts okay how to obtain the 10.47 volt is from uh, this one okay it's from this one so you we, we put in the R and X just now and the theta so as well as the L is 150 so I is from the previous and I is from the previous uh, where is it here okay so this one I1 okay because this is the rated load current so 275.66 is our I okay it's our I here so once you put everything here then divide by the VS is 415 okay so Vs is 415 divided by 415 that means we obtain the voltage drop uh, for the running is 2.52 that means in the total from source to load it is 1.5 plus 2.525 so it's about uh, 4 right? it's about 4% uh, percent. so that means it is still uh, under the I mean 2.52 is still under the the spec eh? because uh, the spec is given here is 3 eh? not more than 3 so we only have 2.52 so uh, as assignments or, or as a, a practice that mean you can uh, uh, to, to have the starting voltage drop uh, yourself right so just uh, change the uh, the starting power vector to 0 0.3 they mean the theta is now 72 2.53 and then the current is six times that means uh, what we obtained just now the current multiply with six okay and uh, the rest should be the same and the rest should be the same then you can obtain simply obtain for the starting voltage drop okay so that is the uh, the section 2.5 uh, for the protect uh, for the uh, power cables so now we move on 2.6 for the protective devices so the protective devices we only focus on two one is a circuit breaker and we look at what is the properties of the circuit breaker and another one is the uh, simply the the fuse okay. so the circuit breaker we have understood that it is a, a, a common uh, protective device used uh, in a lot of the uh, electrical installations and is much depends on the following yeah? this much depends on the following the thermal stress electrodynamic stress and the constant load current so what is the constant load current so they mean in order to get the uh, the proper size the settings of the circuit breaker they mean we need to consider these three things okay and look at the uh, the properties of the uh, the circuit breaker I mean the definition when you buy the circuit breaker so it has a rated operation uh, voltage and eh? rated operational voltage or VE here so what is the VE actually it is the voltage of the uh, circuit breaker operation okay? and uh, another one is the rated current uh, these two are in the healthy condition eh? in the healthy conditions during the healthy conditions and uh, this is the uh, the ratings of our circuit breaker the rated currents i n eh? normally is written as i n okay? so the maximum value currents okay? and then uh, this is uh, abnormal eh? abnormal or unhealthy condition du during overload or short circuit okay we look at the overload first eh? the overload or sometimes uh, we call it as a short circuit really trip current okay so it is written as i r IR. So IR is the maximum current eh, that the circuit breaker can carry it out without tripping. Uh, so that is the maximum current that the the CB can be uh, uh, carried out eh, without tripping. It is haven't haven't reached to the the tripping and eh, haven't reached to the tripping in this case. So that's why that is the uh, the trip currents. Eh, the maximum current is the the trip currents. Uh, next is the uh, this is the uh, the highest one eh, the highest one 
actually the second highest eh? there is another highest one eh? that the instantaneous so this is the IM IM is the rated short circuit breaking capacity and eh? the rated short circuit breaking capacity so this is the highest value of the current eh? that the CB is capable of breaking eh? the breaking without being damaged uh, it still can break the circuit that means it's uh, open the circuit but uh, it's uh, itself is still safe and eh? I mean it is not uh, up to the damage uh, uh, level okay and and uh, this is uh, how we use it eh, in the domestic and uh, industrial circuit eh? industrial circuit so for example we focus on this one IEC okay so we have uh, two types of the protective relay one is the thermal magnetic types another one is electronic type of the relays Okay. and um, as you can see here the uh, arrangement eh, the arrangements IR is equal to IN fix eh, and uh, IR IR what is IR right? IR is the overload or the short circuit relay trip circuit uh, currents eh, trip current so IR is the tripping current so the tripping current if we are using the turbo magnetic so it should be uh, adjusted or set between the uh, IN, IN is our uh, nominal current, uh, nominal rated current uh, from 0 0.7 up to 1 uh, 0 0.7 up to 1 so in between 0 0.7 to, to 1 of the nominal uh, rated current so for the long delay so long delay so if we are using the electronic taps then uh, our settings is uh, is wider which is from 0 0.4 up to 1 so same to the, uh, the short circuit protection as so this is for the overload protection and this is for the short circuit protection so for the short circuit protection so we adjust eh, our IR so it's multiplied with 1.5 and then IM and the IM is here yeah, this is the IM uh, IM should be less than 10 times of the IR okay, less than 10 times of the IR so for the instantaneous uh, fix so the I is about 12 to 15 times uh, so it is much larger than this one that's why I said this is the highest and not this one okay so this is the highest I for the instantaneous is 12 to 15 uh, I n okay if we compare uh, this is the, the red color one is the circuit breaker operation and this one the small piece of the gray color here is the uh, the fuse and the fuse operation because uh, and we know that this is the current and the currents and uh, no matter this is the uh, nominal current rated current or short circuit current and etc so this is the current rating and this is the time so what is the time means times of the operation uh, time means is the operation of either fuse of or the CB so if you look at here very obviously the fuse can be uh, uh, isolate our circuit eh, on the faulty area very quickly as compared to uh, this oscillation uh, oscillatory uh, moments of the circuit breaker because the circuit breaker is like that so once it op uh, detected the uh, the fault that means it need to pick up and eh? after pick up then it has the uh, time to to, uh, to on eh? that mean to 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 open the the circuit eh? it has time to open the circuit and after that once it open it has the uh, arcing that means it need to uh, to have some some times to remove the arcing then it just stabilize here okay so as compared uh, the circuit breaker to the fuse the fuse is using sh the shortest time so which is about a uh, quarter to half of the cycle only so let's say the cycle so for the 50 hertz basis uh, power system so one cycle is 0 0.02 second or 20 millisecond so that means uh, the fuse can be operated uh, within uh, the longest one is only 10 milliseconds as yes, compared to this one so this is more uh, much more uh, longer than the fuse okay, the CV so the CV could be up to uh, 100 milliseconds just to to operate Okay, this is how we uh, have the characteristics of the circuit breaker okay this is the T so time of the the tripping a uh, time for the tripping and this is the uh, uh, the currents and uh, this is the currents uh, the current so this one is in lock 
Uh, that means 10. Uh, that means 10 means it's 10 times of the, the current, nominal current. So nominal current will be here. Okay, This is the nominal current, 1. So that means this is uh, uh, 2. That means 2 times of the nominal current. And this is up to 10 times of the nominal current. Okay? 10 times of nominal current. So that's why uh, uh, here the tripping time is less. Eh? That means when when our uh, a current or the fourth, fourth current is increasing, is increasing, that means our tripping time will be decreasing. Okay? So it has two categories. One is the cold trip condition. So this is cold trip condition. And the other one is the uh, hot trip condition. So the, this one is uh, more to the uh, uh, sh I mean short circuit protection. And this one is for the overloads. Okay? Short circuit. And this is for the overload. And only overloads, we use this uh, region. If it is a short circuit, that mean we use these regions yeah, to see the the tripping time as well as the the short circuit uh, current here. Yeah. So for example, our short circuit uh, current is uh, that mean uh, how many times you want? Let's say five times. So five times one, two, three, four, five. So our short circuit current is five times of the nominal. Okay, and then we will analyze. Okay, during the hot hot trip condition. So uh, the tripping times will be around here. So it's about one point something seconds and eh, the tripping times. Okay, so if our our fourth current is going further up to 10, eh, up to 10 uh, times of the nominal current, so that means of course the uh, the tripping time is much more lesser, eh, much more lesser. So it's about here. Eh? So here is this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, about 0 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5 seconds. We were tricks, right? So this is uh, how we uh, look at the uh, the tripping times and the the uh, the fourth current here. Uh, same to this one. Eh? So this one is also uh, almost the same like this one, eh? but rather this one is just. Uh, mention the IR, where is the IR, where is the IM, and where is the II, eh, instantaneous. And eh, this is the instantaneous relay tripping. Uh, this is the highest one. Okay? So after this, it will break our. Uh, this is the ICU. ICU is the breaking capacity of our circuit breaker. That means once you reach this these uh, regions, that means our circuit breaker. Uh, is damaged. Yeah, is damaged. No more can be used again. Okay, so this is the uh, 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 how the closing or opening cycle of the circuit breaker. Yeah? So it happens at like this one. So if we have faults here, so our relay detected a fault, and it will send a signal to the uh, to our circuit breaker. Then our break our circuit breaker need. Uh, the relay need to pick up. Uh, so this is the pick up times. Uh, pick up time, and after that, uh, this one is the fourth current. Uh, the fourth current will up to here only, will be clear. Uh, up only here will be clear, and this is the operation of of our circuit breaker. See, so our circuit breaker here is still idle. Is still uh, not operation uh, because the relay is still picking up. And then uh, this is just uh, the opening time. So our circuit breaker just started to open. It started to open. Then once it's open in between, then there is a arcing. Yeah? We have the arcing, arcing time here. And then after the arcing time, then we only can totally isolate the, the faulty circuits. Yeah? The faulty circuit. So that means it takes a few times, yeah? a few uh, few categories of times yeah? before we can clear the uh, Clear the fault here. Okay. Uh, so this is the same uh, definitions. Yeah, that means this uh, open position and then close position. It is not instantaneously from open to close, yeah, but it is ramping. It is in in the ramping uh, 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 style. Yeah, in the ramping uh, uh, style, like this one. Okay. And uh, when uh, when it switch from close to open position, also it will ramping ramping down like this one okay uh, so this one is ramping up okay, from uh, open position to close position ramping up and this one is ramping down okay. so the most consideration is this one I mean so we need to consider a lot of the uh, the times here okay. 
Okay, it's not only uh, directly on or off. And finally, we have the 2.7 is the motor control center MCC. So MCC, as we understood from the chapter one, it is the uh, a controller for a group of the uh, electric motor, a group of the electric motors. So it is uh, like a central, uh, it's a centralized hubs for the a group of the motors. So either it's operating for the low voltage or uh, the medium voltage, uh, up to 15 kV here. So uh, what is the function of the MCC is normally to start up the uh, the motors yes, to start up that means uh, to start up individual motors uh, that mean in the MCC itself they have a lot of the uh, starting uh, circuits uh, for individual uh, motor and the drive a uh, drive uh, it could it could drive uh, a group of the uh, the motors uh, it's, dri it's a drive it's a motor drive means so they have a lot of the auxiliary equipment uh, in the MCC. Remember, you have the control switch, the indicator light, the uh, the programmable controller, the PIC, the PLC, and the metering equipment, for example, and etc. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, the basics arrangements of the uh, MCC. Yeah? So we have the motor uh, here. And of course, this is all the the auxiliary equipment eh, for the and in in the MCC center eh, and the MCC. So the typically uh, one motor starter control one motor. That means as I as I said just now, uh, the starting circuit must be controlled individually eh, individually. But uh, for the uh, a drive, uh, that means it can drive a, a group of the the motors. So it depends on the needs and the installation as well, okay. And uh, this is normally uh, if we have a plant like this one, uh, we have a group of the uh, 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 production lines. Let's say production line one, two, and three. So of course inside here we have the conveyor. Okay? Then we have fans, and we have suction uh, system here. Then every uh, single piece of the motors here is controlled through the the MCC here. Right, so the MCC is just placed at one cubicle like this one, right? Okay, uh, for that uh, I end for the chapter two, right? So uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you again in the chapter three.